You know, sometimes you just need a jump. Ooh, god damn! Wow, yeah, let's review a movie! Jolt! <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of those. Is brought to us by director Tanya Wexler and stars Kate Beckinsale, Laverne Cox, Stanley Tucci, and Bobby Cannavale. So I saw the trailer for this movie not too long ago and I thought to myself, hey, that reminds me of something. And yeah, there are a few similarities between these two properties, most notably the main character shocking the shit out of themselves throughout the film, but that's about where the main similarities stop. In fact, this movie is kind of crank backwards. You see, Kate Beckinsale's character has this issue where she gets like really fucking mad at like the smallest little thing. Any like slightly annoying thing out in the world that people do, she just like fucking loses it and unloads on their ass. So really, I mean, I can kind of relate. Obviously, this makes life out in the civilized world a bit difficult for her. So her doctor, played by Stanley Tucci, develops this new type of therapy where she has these contact pads all over her and a button in her hand that she can deliver an electric shock to her system at any point in time. Apparently the right shock at the right time will nullify these feelings that she's having. So yes, she is shocking herself throughout the film, but she's doing it to calm the fuck down, unlike Jason Statham and Crank, who is doing it to get jacked up. This movie's story is fairly basic. We have Kate Beckinsale's character, who has a real hard time meeting and speaking with people, for obvious reasons. She meets a nice guy and falls for him, and next thing you know, some nefarious types have done some bad stuff to this guy, so she goes out for revenge. This is kind of where the name of the movie I don't totally get. I mean, I understand what it means by jolt, obviously, but a good portion of the movie, you know, when she's raging out and going after all these bad guys, she's not jolting herself. That would be kind of counterproductive. Probably should have called it like no jolt or non-jolt, unjolt, I don't know. But hey, jolt sounds cool, so I guess I get why they went with that. This movie is one of those hyperkinetic ADHD infused flicks. Like it's moving at a thousand miles a minute. There's a whole lot of fucking shaky cam and just cuts galore. Now even though there are quite a few cuts to give it that frantic feel, I will say that the editing here is better than we usually get from those kinds of movies. Yeah, there are a lot of cuts, but the editor knew what they were doing. It absolutely gives us that very frantic feel that they were going for, but we can still tell what's going on on screen. This is essentially a revenge tale, but it's a revenge tale that's told with a bit of a darkly comedic taste. It's not quite as over the top as something like Crank or Crank 2, but it is a bit over the top. It's very exaggerated. I ain't gonna lie though, there were quite a few times when Kate Beckinsale's character did something to some of the annoying people out in the world that I was just like, wow, this is like wish fulfillment right here. Thank you, movie, for giving me this. You have gifted me something special here. Now beyond that little pleasantry, the rest of the movie and the way that it plays out is pretty good. Not great, but it is entertaining. This ain't gonna be on anybody's top 10 list of the year, that's for sure, but it is entertaining enough while you're watching. Watching. And while half of that is due to the fairly exciting, interesting action we got, the rest of it is due to the performances. Kate Beckinsale is great as our main character, Lindy. She has a free-spirited, I don't give a fuck about anything attitude that really brought something to the role. She's also not taking it too serious and that added something as well. I feel like if this part was played too seriously, this movie would have been nowhere near as much fun. But given the way that it plays out and is performed, the overall so-so story raises up a few notches. You really do like Lindy, even though she does some very questionable things throughout the film. I'm pretty sure she killed somebody while she was fucking them at one point in this movie. I mean, I guess there's worse ways to go out, but it doesn't change the fact that she killed an innocent. But all that aside, while her character's traits aren't necessarily likable, the way that she's played, like kind of from a voyeuristic perspective, is entertaining and likable. And most of that is attributed to the very on board with the premise and clearly having a fantastic time doing it, Kate Beckinsale. While everybody involved is doing a pretty good job, I also wanted to make note of the great Laverne Cox as Detective Nevin. She plays one of the detectives that is hot on the trail of Beckinsale's Lindy as she's on her path to destruction to find these people that took out her boyfriend. And she, much like Beckinsale, is having a great time. Her performance was really entertaining. Now this is an action movie, so without competent action, it's gonna fall a bit flat. Fortunately, the movie does have some very competent and exciting action scenes. They're all shot very well, entertaining, and fun. How 
However, after a while, it all does start to get a bit monotonous. While our character does have a reason to continue getting into these situations, after a while, that reason's not quite enough. We want a bit more from our story. Unfortunately, you're not really gonna get that. We get a little bit more in the end, but it wasn't quite enough to inject that something that you'd been wanting out of the film. Now, the movie never gets boring, that's for damn sure, but you are left kind of wanting something a bit more, something a bit deeper. They even went as far in the end to hint at a sequel with a deeper, broader world. And if they had hinted, or better yet, shown that halfway through the movie, I absolutely would have been on board. By the end of the movie, though, I'm just kind of at the point where I'm like, okay, fine, if it happens, it happens, but I'm not really going to be holding my breath. I'm not really super excited about the situation. As it stands, it was pretty good and entertaining for the night, though. Guys, Jolt, while fairly entertaining, couldn't quite keep its energy up all the way to the end. It probably could have used a Jolt about three quarters of the way through, in fact. The solid filmmaking and frantic pace won't ever allow you to venture off into boredom. But the super thin story isn't going to be quite enough to keep you totally invested all the way to the end. It does have some really entertaining performances and very fun, energetic action scenes. I just wish there was a teensy bit more depth. But as it stands, Jolt is absolutely worth streaming. Across the street. While I was hoping for a little bit more out of this movie, overall, it was a fairly entertaining ride. So if you're looking for a fairly light action movie with a whole lot of energy for the night, then check out Jolt. I think you'll have a fairly good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of Jolt. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Madison. Are you really that stupid? You know what? I think I am exactly that stupid. All right, so I wanted to spell a rumor that we see about these little things right here in movies quite a bit, and it's just kind of widely thought to be. And that is to say that these could kill you. And while never say never, the chances of you being electrocuted by jumper cables hooked up to a 12 volt car battery are extremely rare, almost impossible. The amount of voltage pushing through a car battery just isn't enough under normal circumstances. Now, as I've said that, just that's kind of a PSA, kind of to give you guys some information when people are in the movies always doing all this and zapping people and stuff. No, it typically would not work that way. That does not mean I'm saying go take jumper cables hooked up to a car battery and attach them to parts of your body. Probably not a good idea because as soon as you do that thinking everything's okay, something will go wrong and some out of the ordinary circumstance will come into play and you will fry your fucking nipples off or whatever other part of your body you attach this shit to. Plus the springs on these clamps are really strong and these teeth would really fucking hurt. I'm just saying. If the electricity didn't get you, the clamps probably will. You're not coming out of this situation totally unfazed. Plus there are devices that you can purchase from novelty shops online and brick and mortar that will allow you to do these things in a safer way. I would suggest you go that route instead. Yeah, and no, I'm not gonna talk about how it is that I know that. Nor am I gonna talk about the convenient way that these websites will deliver things to your house in very nondescript packages. Mm.